here we are, bottom of the Smash Mountain, but also in the twitch.tv slash Toph BBQ stream. That's right. We have Golden Guardian's very own Toph with me on Bottom of Smash Mountain podcast while also simultaneously streaming live. Today being October 2nd, tomorrow ha- is, is a day of reckoning, but it's still October 2nd today. I'm referencing Mean Girls when I say that to anybody who... Oh, that's right. That. Yeah. But Toph, thank you so much for joining me and thank you for inviting me on your stream. Hey, appreciate that. No, this is this is a good idea. This is a cool idea. Um, I might even chop this up and put it on YouTube in some form because I, I think it's just kind of a cool topic. I've never done this. I've never done top 10, top 10 melee happenings over the course of the year. And this is your 100th episode, right? So yes, congratulations. Is, thank you. I really appreciate that. So for me, it's 100 episodes in and I thought, well, I could just take a victory lap, but I'll do that in the form of making a top 10, a little bit subjective, of course. So to anyone yeah. who is out there going, okay, let's get the notes up. We're going to say how Jesse and Toph are wrong, but it's not necessarily about that. If you find that it's a disagreeing thing, for me, it's very personal. There's a few things on here that only I or people close to me know as it relates to Melee specifically, but most of this, yeah. it'll be quite easy to pick up on. So I'm excited to... So I think people like that stuff, though. I think that's what makes Melee special is those little personal moments, you know? Absolutely. Well, And like I said, I really appreciate you coming on to make it even more special. And even though it's September, there are so many cool events coming up. Like we have Main Stage and then Smash Summit 12. It's going to be awesome. So hopefully those moments will show up. Maybe you'll get to do a part two of some kind on your own. And I'm super fine, by the way, with you chopping it up for your own YouTube channel. That's something that I watch very, very religiously i make sure to get the tof videos in so twitch uh, youtube.com slash tof bbq for those who are curious you already know appreciate that you know it's 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 true uh three digits is is special um and let me tell you when we started doing the scar and tof show uh Tafikins, who knows me and bobby quite well uh was betting he made a bet with us that was turned out to be a very bad bet he said you guys are never going to make it past episode three because you're, <laughs> you're you're lazy and you're you know you work you're you're busy with work and it's gonna fall by the wayside and you're not gonna you're not gonna keep doing this thing, um and we proved them wrong we got hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of episodes deep of both the Scarntoff show and the reads um and you know it gets to a point where they just kind of you you they yeah you just kind of go and you know it it becomes uh you know its own thing and you you it kind of just starts running and and um I think getting to a hundred is is a pretty special moment as someone who's gotten to 100 on episodes of things that I've been a part of in the past. It shows a lot of hard work and dedication, all for a game where, I mean, it's not very, what's the word, uh, financially war- rewarding at all times, but one that we still like to run into brick walls for, for the love of the game, yep. even if it's not necessarily playing. I just love talking about Melee, and I know you do as well. Yep. So I think that's about as good as an intro to get started. I appreciate you congratulating me on making it to 100 and hopefully for you as well radio melee all of the future endeavors go well for you also a great thing you and ppmd hosting that podcast is awesome to listen to as well appreciate that so for me i'll open up with uh number 10 on mine and okay this is this is pretty recent so this is something that's fresh in everybody's mind and that is flash beating ginger at riptide for me watching that not live because I think that there was another set that was on the stream that I was paying attention to. I think they were doing two different streams leading up to Melee Top 8 for Riptide, but I went and watched it back right away because I said, who is Flash? Flash beat Ginger to, wait, what? And that was an amazing set to watch. I, uh... I, 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 I was definitely there for that. I actually didn't get to catch Flash versus Ginger. What I did watch was Flash versus Wizrobe, and I actually commentated one of those sets. Uh, actually... I think I commented both Flash versus Wizard sets. And um, I was really impressed by Flash, as I think everybody was. Uh, not to mention, um, yeah, I think it was just dope that it happened in Ohio, which is Flash's home state. So that was really cool. And uh, I was, who was I talking to? I was actually talking to Atrock about Flash versus Ginger uh, for reasons that maybe in a, a couple weeks will become obvious. But I was talking to him about Flash. And um, Atrock said, the streets watch Flash, which 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 really stuck with me. I feel like I feel like Flash is like he's like the People's Falco. You know what I mean? At least right now he's the People's Falco. So it was pretty cool. 
but also really fast. Like I couldn't believe what I was seeing because I know how fast Ginger is, but somehow to me, it felt like that flash was just ever so slightly faster in terms of movement. Is that what you got when you watched back the set or what did you remember seeing? Yeah, a lot of uh, speed, but a lot of control with lasers. Yeah. I Apparently, I, I heard this the other day from, um, who told me this? Who told me this? Someone told me this. Who was I talking to about this? Chad, do you remember? Was it on stream? Someone was telling me that Flash and Frenzy both take Falco lessons from this, like, Falco coach dude named SP. What's that guy's name? SP99? SP99, SP99. shoutouts to uh, Melee Stats. SP99 is a regular on that Discord. Yeah, so they both apparently take... Um, and, and apparently they, they, they play and stuff like that uh, with each other. And um, it was funny because apparently there's a clip where, where Flash and Frenzy from the UK are playing each other. And they, they basically like go for the exact same sequence against each other, which is really funny. Um, but... Yeah, I I think Flash is. Uh, I hope to see more of them for sure. Absolutely. So, what do you got for your number ten spot? I had a very generic number ten. I thought I would lead with a kind of more all encompassing sort of thing. And my number ten is simply offline events coming back, mm -hmm. both in the form of Smash Summit, which was obviously an invitational. And I was talking to Zane about this, where it was like, man, there was a lot of hope because you know Smash Summit ten was a uh, ten eleven rather was the offline one where. Yes. We were like, all right, things are finally going to get back to normal. Obviously, okay, Delta variant happened. You know, Riptide, we were all masked up. and um, but, but Smash Summit 11 was really special because we were like, all right, this is it. We're like, we're at the tail end of the pandemic. And I mean, even with Riptide, like Riptide came, Riptide went, and not many COVID cases. I actually did get sick at Riptide, but I went and got a COVID test. It wasn't COVID. I got normal sick. Um, which is a win. I'll call that a W. I think yeah. getting normal sick again is hype. I haven't been normal sick in a year and a half. I forgot what it felt like. It actually felt like <laughs> shit. But you know what? Whatever. It's not a big deal. Um, so, yeah, I mean, you know, we're still wearing masks for, for the time being. Uh, we're still having to be a little bit, you know, doing due diligence. But the fact that we can all get in a big room together and play Smash Bros. again and apparently not infect the shit out of each other uh, is pretty great, even when we're uh, cramming a lot of people into a, you know, a pretty dense room. Uh, apparently, we're 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 doing pretty good. So I think the fact that Riptide, no one cel no one seems to be celebrating this, but the fact that Riptide happened and it wasn't deemed a super spreader event, and all the Smashers at the venue were very good about keeping their masks on, you know, pretty much all of the time. Uh, with I guess a few exceptions, according to like when we talked to Jade on Radio Melee, they were yeah. saying that there was you know they had to yell at some people, but you know. By and large, I walked around, I didn't see anybody trying to violate the mass policy, like, all weekend. So for me, I was like, all right, well, overwhelming success. And uh, hopefully by, you know, six months from now, a year from now, um, we'll, we'll, we'll just be back in full swing, so. And I like, I like the fact that there's, like, mask mandates and, like, vaccination requirements or negative tests, yeah, like, yeah. like, results leading up to the weekend of, like, whatever major or big regional it's going to be. I really like that format for now, at least, because it's, I, I think that's, it goes a really long way in helping to keep COVID cases from getting a bunch of people together down. Yeah. And I'm, I'm, I'm hoping that the rest of the, like, like, right now, low tied city is happening so hopefully it's the same result as well that there's minimal cases that come out of that i think i heard, heard that one or two locals or regionals that had immediately followed up riptide had to be shut down just for that like iteration or happening for the weekend following or something yeah just because sense. there was like had to be people that were like oh you got covid now so why don't we just go ahead and like play it safe and we'll just come back next week or next month whatever the case may be but other than that mm -hmm. i mean i i still think that that's like that's really a really positive starting point and hopefully it continues to get better i'm a more of an yeah. optimist so I'm, I'm always going to end up saying hopefully it gets better just no matter what for sure i wanted to get into number nine spot for me and that would be number this nine is, this is very this is very specific so scar took 2020 off from twitter from not the community like 100 percently i think yeah scar showed up once or twice uh here and there but came back to streaming to, in 2021 mm. and i think within seconds within within 60 seconds of playing an unranked slippy match got a nice little edge guard and did the scar face at the camera you know he like booted yeah. it up and that killed me just because 
I think I had heard at some point on either the Scar and Tove show, the Reeds, something mm-hmm. that Scar, mm-hmm. of course, this is well known that he's always sees the modern Falcons and it's like, how do you do it? But specifically right. just doing a nun thing killed me. And then <laughs> he retweeted it's, it's a, sad a clip that you have I shared on Twitter. That was cool too. Go ahead. It's sad that you have to call it a nun thing since, you know, I think it was partially, part of me thinks that the nun camera angles were inspired by the way, obviously Bobby looked at the camera during the people's champion mode, but you know, there's a lot of cyclicalness to these sorts of things. You even look at the way a lot of, you know, we traced it the other day uh, when I was when I was talking with um, Ludwig and some of the SoCal guys, like how a lot of Ludwig's early mannerisms that obviously became super popular in his stream were pretty much yoinked directly from Bobby Scar and then twisted in some manner. <laughs> um, and, and so there's a lot of, this has been really interesting for me, is how the cyclical nature of a lot of uh, these mannerisms and these, you know, even looking at like how Sejam was uh, one of the big, like Sejam was in chat every single time we did the Scar and Tove show. He was always in chat, was like one of the most regular Scar and Tove show watchers. Um, and now years later, you know, Sejam is one of my biggest inspirations for content. So I think it's really funny how these things come full circle. Uh, but yeah, I'm embarrassed to not have Scar on. I didn't, I, you know, <laughs> if, I could, if I could amend my list, I would put Scar getting mango lessons. Honorable mention, honorable that mention. That was this year. Yeah, I didn't think of that because uh, I, you'll notice my list has tends to have a skew for like tournament stuff um, mm-hmm. and 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 larger events. But yeah, Mango Scar coaching sessions was definitely that is definitely super duper uh, a that is a very very valid um, how do I say very very valid thing to have on the list because those were really special and th- there were some really really fire moments that came out of those coaching sessions. My number nine is actually, I had to do it for Europe. I had to do it for the EU. I put the same circuit 2021, just the whole concept of it. The finals haven't actually happened yet, um, but the same. And I, I, I didn't actually know this. SAME, same stands for still, uh, what is it? Still, It's like still, not hosting, but still something melee events. Still, <laughs> still what's the word? It's not organizing because still the organizing starts with an O. How did they, what does it stand for? Someone in chat might know, actually. Shout out to Firepuff12, by the way. You do make the honorable of mentions course. towards the end if you stick around. Love you, Firepuff12. Uh, now I'm trying to Google it, and I don't see it anywhere. But but it's it, it's basically like... what What's a word that starts with the letter A? <laughs> means... I, I feel like still at Melee events, but that's too no, easy. No, that's no, too no. That's like no. too obvious. Yeah. Well, they... Uh, yeah. They're, they're, they've got a they've got a, a unique uh, they've got a unique perspective over in Aardvark, over I in love that. The, so uh, whatever whatever it stands for, it's like what's a word that I could go on thesaurus.com and probably figure it out from that. But anyway, uh, I just think the whole idea of like and, th- and this really did start in 2010, uh, 2020 um, with you know pull on arena events with um, the EU bracket at Smash Summit. 10 i feel like there has been more of a spotlight on eu melee in the last two years than there's probably ever been and that is a weird thing to say with the absence of uh armada having armada having retired in 2018 right but i feel like there's actually just more um eu melee itself has has more of a global spotlight on it i think than ever before which i think is really awesome and um the same circuit uh who i believe frenzy is actually in the lead right now um, with just how much frenzy has been entering stuff and winning stuff, uh, I believe the finals are actually going to be at the end of the year. Um, I think there, I think it's still a tentative date in probably November, but there's been weighing of like what's happening with offline and online. Uh, but there are a lot of really, really, really cool players from the from the from from European melee that I really like watching. Players like Pipsqueak, players like Frenzy, Solo Battle, Mint. I mean, I could go on and on, but yeah, I, I think they're a, it's, it's a really cool region, and I think they're probably deeper than they've ever been before. I'm not going to say better at the top level because, again, no Armada, but um, it, the field feels wide open again where it's not just Armada left in and then, you know, Triff is going to kind of pick up the scraps, you know, after those two. Um, and that's really cool to see because they got a lot of really dope players over there. And when I went to Air, which was my favorite tournament of all time, um, I was, uh, yeah, I was like, man, I, these guys deserve more of a spotlight. They're so dope. So that's my number nine. It's just the same circuit. 
and just kind of in conjunction with that, everything everything related to EU Melee and how much more of a spotlight they've had on them uh, than, than, than in the past. I was so excited when I heard about the same circuit sometime. I feel like it might have been... I want to say it was announced around five days of Melee, but that might not be true. It might have been announced sometime in January, but just yeah. there's, a, a, there's a purpose mm. to European Arranging, Melee right. now. Like The EU has something to kind of build up towards because even if... North America doesn't necessarily have a circuit at all times. I'm exempting the Smash World Tour when I say that. Hopefully that starts to build momentum going into next year yeah. especially. But what I'm talking about is North America doesn't need a lot of help in generating storylines and hyping up players because most of the top players are here. So mm -hmm. having a little bit more of a spotlight on EU and hopefully the same goes for these other regions like South America and so, long, so, so on where you can have players show up to something like a smash world tour like international finals and hopefully continue to say hey we play melee too and we're really good at the game and it's yeah. not just north america it's not just like players east coast west coast and canada and midwest sorry definitely <laughs> definitely i want to talk about this is a i wanted to put this higher but i couldn't justify it but this still had to make my list and number eight we have the s fat jam just that gift. SFAT Jam was this year? Oh uh, my god. I thought it was SCL2. Was it? SCL2. Was it SCL2? It was SCL2. I feel All like right. It was. You know, or this is funny. I'm glad you're including. No, I think you're right. And I, I think I, I know you're right because SCL2 features, uh, there, there are several things that happen in SCL2 that will be higher up on my list. SFAT, SFAT Jam is. Oh, good. there it is. Let's go. That's a good one for sure. Um. My number eight is, uh, you know, S Fat Jam is a, you know, actual, um, yeah, it's a, it's a, it's, it was definitely, it definitely got a lot of traction in my chat, uh, for a while. Um, and it actually did inspire me to make, um, uh, some of my own dancing emotes and, uh, jamming emotes. Now, one thing I will say though about S Fat Jam, and this does need to be said, is that it's actually not really a jam emote. It really should be S Fat Please. Cause S Fat, the jam emotes, you get you can compare with plup jam and plup please, okay. um, and usually the please emotes are dances and jam emotes are like well you know you're like it's usually like this kind of motion yeah yeah like head head bouncing it's like a low so, key bop it's not outrageously right. like going hard and it's usually more zoomed in it's usually more zoomed in so really it should be titled as fat please if we're if we're abiding <laughs> by the Twitch emote naming uh, meta so to speak or the um, how do you say the uh, the lexicon per se? Is there no room but for okay. innovation though? Trendsetter, convention, convention. Thank you. Uh, you know, I think just with Twitch emotes, people like the convention. You know, like there's like certain things you come to expect. When I hear something champ or pog something, I'm like, okay, I think I know what to expect from that, yeah. right? But there's some subtlety, right? There's some subtlety. There's some pog champ emotes that really look more like a craigasm. So there's 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 you know there's a little bit of nuance to it that 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 sometimes gets lost in the sauce. So that's okay. I'm I'm down. Anyway, I think S Jam was funny, uh, especially considering the way it happened. Uh, one thing I will say is actually S Fat Jam is not, in my opinion, the funniest thing that has ever happened after S Fat beat Plup online. Um, I think it is the second funniest thing that happened. So S Fat, the story, of course. Uh, hey, thanks, Walt, for the tier one. So the story, of course, is that um, S Fat beats Plup and advances and qualifies for Summit, basically off beating Plup, and then S Fat Jam and then gets up and is so happy and ecstatic that he does this dance gets grilled by homemade waffles uh for 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 his uh you know for 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 the for the execution so to speak on on twitter but it's a very funny moment but there was actually a better moment in an earlier online tournament i think this happened in 2020 so this will not be in my list but sfat had actually beaten plup in an online tournament and at the time i guess sfat was practicing the piano uh a lot right um and I don't know if SFAT knew this, but Plup, so Plup had been doing this thing, and Plup still does this thing. In fact, I think he was doing it the other day this week, where he'll watch Hungrybox's tournament runs and basically be his cheerleader, right? He'll be his hype man. So Hungrybox will turn on the stream, watch what? Hungrybox play these ultimate online tournaments with, with terrible lag, and he'll pop off for him, Plup focus, all this stuff. And then when he loses, he'll play some sad music, which is often Claire de Lune. So Hbox loses, Plup puts on Claire de Lune. It's very sad mm. because Plup, Hbox was knocked out of the bracket. It's, we're all sad for him. Drop S Fat actually beat, exactly. So S Fat beat 
plop in an online tournament. It was maybe an SCL one week or something or LACS, one of those events. And he actually has a piano in his background in his room. And SFAT gets up and says, let me play Plup a song. And he actually, I have no idea if he realized Plup did this thing with Claire de Lune, but SFAT gets up, walks over the piano and plays Claire de Lune very poorly. <laughs> like a lot of mistakes, really bad <laughs> dynamics. You can tell Zach's only been playing the piano for like a couple months. Like not very, <laughs> doesn't sound very good. Doesn't sound like the beautiful Claire de Lune that we know. But he plays Claire de Lune in his sloppy SFAT manner for Plup. Would Plup, and Plup is, you know, probably salty or whatever. And it's just, <laughs> it was the funniest thing. And I can't believe this didn't make more traction on social media. Um, I don't, I don't, I was I, watching. This is my first time hearing no one about knows, this. No, no one knows this happened. No oh one knows gosh. this happened. It was like, it was some random, I don't think it was a big tournament. I, I don't know what the hell even was going on. It was something, but it was so funny. And I was like, I cannot believe this is happening. As Fed is playing him Claire de Lune. And no no one knows about this. No one talks about this. But I think it was 2020, not 2021. So it won't be in my list. But so we got to go. get to your number eight, I think, still, right? Yeah, my number eight. This is the first Mimi number eight on my list. Okay, uh, this is the go. first one uh, where, um, you know, I reached a little bit. This is a more recent one. It's a little bit. It's top of mind for a lot of people. I've always been a big fan of uh, redemption arcs. And I think Hungry Bucks is somebody who, you know, years ago was like, you know, he had a lot of people in the community, like, you know, weren't big HBox fans or what have you. But now I would say HBox has become a very beloved kind of personality and figure in the streaming scene in particular. People, uh, I love watching HBox stream and watching him just pop off in the most, you know, it's like a, hu it's like a spectacle of, it's almost like a caricature of human emotion, right? Mm -hmm. It's, it's ridiculous. And uh, nothing brought more want. joy to me than my number eight, which was Zwan Debiedma, uh, Zane's parody of Hungry Box's mannerisms. <laughs> in recent weeks, uh, Zwan Debiedma has been tearing it up in uh, online tournaments, um, and I love all of the little Hboxisms. I love when Zwan loses to a fox or beats a fox, it really doesn't matter. The gameplay <laughs> really doesn't matter. It doesn't matter what the uh -huh. stock count is. And he just goes, this guy's cracked. This yeah. guy, this, this fox player is actually going to be top 24 in the world in 7.5 months. I, I can tell. I can tell. <laughs> My favorite, I, I just think that's hilarious. If I may, is there was one you clip may. that I saw. It was like something to the effect of... Okay, JV3. No, that doesn't count. I love that one. That doesn't count. Yeah. He's like, oh, edge guards don't count. Okay, Nair doesn't count. For <laughs> forward tilt doesn't count. Projectiles don't count. Better yeah. shield options don't count. There we go. JV. JV, baby. This guy's cracked. This guy's cracked. He's going to be top 15 a year. This guy's cracked. JV, baby. <laughs> I really, I was a big fan of that. Big fan of that. Big, big, big fan of that. So Zwan, Zwan got me pretty good. Zwan got me pretty good. So Zwan's going to be my, my number eight. Oh my gosh. And before I forget, shout outs to Turn Down for Wall. Thanks for dropping the sub. That's awesome. Yeah. Let's go. Love to see it. Number yeah. seven for me uh, is being asked to help with the Alston Melee Bender. So, just a real quick history. Mm. So where is this episode mm. 100? But I actually started this podcast in January of this year. And by February, I had talked to Patty a little bit, who that's Patty is more or less the person behind the Alston Melee Top 10 videos, which we all love, hopefully. Everybody in Toast Chat loves as well. And I was asked to help with the Austin Melee Bender, which was their big online event that Austin Melee was behind running. And it, it was on BTS Smash. It was really cool. That was a really cool event. And they had 24-hour content. I think I think it was 48 hours straight of content. And I was asked to help. I interviewed PPU that way. They they helped me get in contact with PPU to do an interview after he retired. So we got to talk about like his career from that perspective. It was really, really cool. And it was awesome to... The, that was more or less the launching point of the sick merch that you see nowadays, like the Low Tide City merch. I don't know if you saw any of that, but there's like all kinds of cool stuff that's coming out for Smash merch for these tournaments, whether they're online or IRL. And Patty and other people from Austin Melee kind of helped launch that when they did the Bender earlier this year. Mm -hmm. That's when mm -hmm. there was like a lot of cool stuff. Like I have a couple of shirts. I'm not wearing them, but I, I got them. And it was really cool to mm -hmm. help out. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, also Melee Bender was dope. Uh, also, Five Days of Melee, which was last year. Um, I think events of that nature, Rollback Rumble, the big one, another one. Oh, yeah. Um, these sorts of online undertakings are pretty, 
they're pretty huge. They're hard to put together, and they're always impressive because they they there there have been some really good moments in them. Um, so yeah, gotta give it to uh gotta give it to the Austin Melee gang for that. Although I was very, uh, I will say I was very disappointed when I believe it was during the five days of melee there was the family feud battle between Austin Melee and uh, Bad Melee, which was Ludwig and Slime and Aiden and um. You know, I was really thinking, you know, these Alston Melee boys got this. They're they're more in tune with the the modern community, you know, they're 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 less um Yeah, they're they're just they're just they got the boots on the ground, right? They got the boots on the ground. Yeah, they're Ludwig hungry. And, Ludwig, has, Ludwig hasn't played melee in years, right? <laughs> uh so surely them being more in touch with the modern community, they're gonna win this family feud battle. And they they were terrible. They actually did so bad. Um, I was embarrassed by some of their act- as some of their some of their uh, uh, responses. I was like, "This is this is come on, come on." You, I, 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 and they and they they got smoked. They got smoked by uh, Ludwig and Slime and the rest of the Bad Melee crew. And I was I was shocked. I was I was shocked. But uh, you know that being said, I think they picked up the slack. Also, Melee Benner was a, a great success, and I thought it was a lot of fun. Um, and it's actually, it's funny you mentioned it because it transitions, it segues into my number seven. Oh, nice. Uh, the team, the team that won the doubles bracket at the Ulster Melee Bender, uh, Tempo and Run Riot is my number oh, seven. Oh, yeah. Just Tempo and Run Riot in general. Uh, I knew I had to put them and their rise to prominence in my top 10 list when I heard at Riptide that Tempo and Run Riot, did you know they're not even from the same state? Yeah. So you were talking about this on the recap, I believe with, uh, Mm -hmm. yeah, you were talking about this on the recap on the radio melee episode afterwards. And I was like, wait, what do you mean? They're not from the same region. What? That was so, they don't even, yeah, they don't, they never met. They They never met. They met at Riptide. They met at Riptide and they got fourth. They took, uh, what was it? Gatsu and Wizzy to game five and they took a game up, up in H box. Uh, they're an insane team, and the fact that that happened, the fact that there's, the fact that it can even happen in 2021 is bonkers. You can have a top team that didn't even come from the same, they don't even live close to each other. That that never would have happened before. Uh, they literally met via Slippy, Slippy Doubles, which is which is insane. Um, and I'm a big fan of. I, I got to meet not Run Riot actually, but I got to meet Tempo Run Riot at Ari Flown Home. I got to meet Tempo at uh, Riptide. Hopefully, I'll get to meet Run Riot next time. But they're they're crazy. Uh, they're very, very good at doubles. Probably the best doubles team on the East Coast. That's um, uh, that that isn't like you know Plup H Box or or uh, like that do- that doesn't involve that doesn't include like a top ten player in singles. Um, and they they basically win everything that uh that isn't um going to Plup H Box or something like that. Right, um, like one of those like one of the holdover teams because we don't have the brothers. Yes. We don't have. PFAT anymore, but there are still some really good teams, usually Hunger But Mars they Club. could be, they easily could be like the next uh, PFAT. Like, and I would love to see that. That would me, be so cool. Yeah, to me, the doubles teams that are really, uh, that are really coming out in a big way, in a major way right now, are them, and on the West Coast, it's Ralph and Dark Adma. Obviously, Ralph, Ralph and Dark Adma, they've been around the block as players, like people have known Ralph and Melee and Rivals of Aether, and Dark Adma and Melee forever, but they started really grinding doubles after Slippy Doubles came out, and they're a ridiculous team right now. They're so, so, so hard to beat. Um, I've played them with uh, Pew Pew as my teammate. And obviously, I'm not on SFAT's level. But they were definitely beating us. I mean, it was my fault. Like, I'm, I'm, I'm <laughs> definitely the weak link there. But when I team with Pew Pew against anyone else, if it's not, if they're not a top team, like, yeah. we, we will beat them. Because Pew Pew is that good. Oh, yeah. Uh, and Ralph Dark Gamma, like, I was like, dude, this is fucking really hard. Like, I uh, we f- felt like uh, we couldn't put anything together, and um, yeah, so it's it's kind of kind of cool that there are some there's there's some teams that are really going hard in doubles right now, in spite of the fact that you know there's majors that aren't even running doubles right now. Like Maid Sage, I don't know if has has a doubles bracket, uh, but I'm I'm really hoping that that trend changes because I think doubles is sick. Yes, I love doubles as well, except uh, I've. As a, as a spectator, yeah. it's always been hard for me to get into doubles, but the more I get into melee, the more doubles becomes easier for me. It's almost as if, like, I Dub- still really like singles, and I this yeah. is where this is where doubles is. It's a little lower, but because I'm just, in general, just getting deeper and deeper down into the bottom of now, the iceberg. I'm what Doubles sucks to watch. Doubles isn't a spectator sport. Doubles <laughs> is about, okay, at top level doubles is great. So if you're watching, like, the best teams, 
I, I, I like doubles top eights at majors. I like Pufat versus Android Armada, teams like that, right? Like sets like that are always a treat. And they're always really unique and you always see a lot of new stuff. But doubles outside of top eight is like basically unwatchable. But it's so <laughs> fun to play. It's so much better to play than to watch. Mm -hmm. So I feel like as a melee player, not just a fan of the game, but a melee player, it's a shame when it doesn't. Some of my deepest connections in the community, going off on a tangent here, but some of my deepest connections in the community were forged from doubles. Like my whole thing when I was traveling a lot and when I was top 100 was like every time I traveled, I would, I would try my hardest to team with a new person that I'd never teamed with before. And oh. by the end of the weekend, I'd be best friends with them. So this is literally why me and Nunn have like a deep friendship was like we, I, I hit him up and I asked him to team with me at like the first get on my level or whatever. And we beat K word and his teammate hungry hurricane. And we've been like best buddies ever since like that. Uh, a lot of the Michigan guys, um, I hung out with them a lot because I would, I would ask them to team with me at majors. Like, uh, I teamed with duck at big house too, you know, and then we'd start hanging out at Midwest events every, every time. And then I made friends with all the, all the Michigan guys from that. Um, uh, a lot, a lot of, a lot of the friendships I build in melee with like specific players were because I went to an event and I, you know, hit somebody up to team and, and we teamed and, you know, it, it was always a really, really special kind of thing because you don't really, you know, you, it's so much, it's so much deeper when you've actually gone through competition with somebody. Uh, uh, so I, I really miss that. And I wish more people could kind of have that experience. And, and, and that's why I think doubles is great. Not, not for spectatorship. I think it's because of playing hundred percent. And that's a really cool th way to go about it. I hadn't, I don't know if I had heard that before. Not that I've tried to do 100% research on you. I did not go and look back at your bracket results from the past, you know, 10 plus years of your, of your playing, but it's really cool to hear that like that was one way that you thought, oh, this can be a way to get to know people and specifically another melee player by just saying, hey, who wants to go doubles with me this this upcoming tournament? That's really, really cool. And yep. sounds like, yeah, that's like one way to just really, I should try that for my first major. I haven't gone to one yet, by the way. Yeah, if you team with literally some random person, uh, strong recommend, unless, unless you're trying to win the event. Really, <laughs> really fun. Even like, you know, look at like Riptide, like, you know, Envy uh, went, speaking of bad melee, like Envy went and um, uh, like teamed with Bonfire, right? I don't think they really like super duper practice teams together or whatever, but that was really cool to see, right? It's like, oh, Bonfire and Envy are teaming. Like, that's dope. That's really cool. Um, yeah. yeah, love to see those kind of cross country uh, connections. And you're not going to have that without doubles brackets. So yeah, the doubles bracket. I think, needs summits, to I think summit's fucking up if they're not putting doubles in at main stage, but that's just me. <laughs> Some people are doubles haters, I will say, but to those people, I would say uh, you have no social skills and you should get friends. What's the most viral clip from Melee of all time? Wombo Think about combo. it. That's a, that's a doubles. That's, that's a two-on-one combo. That's a two-on-one combo, right? They literally are. That was appropriated by the League of Legends community. Now every team's combo is a Wombo combo. <laughs> They, yeah. Wait, seriously? They took that term and put it into the League of Legends like monikers? Like no, they call it. I mean, the community calls it that when when you do when 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 there's character two characters have to what two champs sorry have to you know do a team combo. That's very do, interesting. Yeah, sort of coordinated thing. Yeah, that's yeah. really cool. I just remember the wombo combo spawning a bunch of like random videos of like something random or exciting happening, and then they just put the wombo combo audio on top yeah. of poor Those homemade were great. waffles. <laughs> Has to live with yeah. Lad in a good and bad way the rest of his life. So mm. number six for me, and yes, this is another SEL two. This one's a little bit more obvious than the one that I had brought up before. And this one is Wizzy beating Zane. A common theme for me that you'll start to notice is that I love upsets, not because mm. I love rooting against top players or like who's supposed to win. It's not that I love rooting against them. It's just that if I know that someone's supposed to win and someone's not supposed to win, I just kind of slightly gravitate towards the person who's not supposed to win just not even, supposed to win even Never if, even if i up. even if i love the person who's supposed to win and i really want them mm -hmm. to win if they lose mm -hmm. i just like there's still a small part of me that's always happy because the other person right. overcame like the seating or the odds or the whatever and brought it back took the w and that was insane like the the last stock of that of the uh of that set with wizzy and zane was like was so cool and and messy but like it was it was awesome 
Oh, it's funny. I may switch my five and my six then because my number five is I'll do these in reverse order. So my number five is Wizzy's run at SL2. Yeah. Yeah. Because that, that was the whole is, thing. Is run at SL2. Mm-hmm. It was a whole thing. It was a whole thing. It was a whole thing. And um it was big because I I like okay, when some when an underdog wins when an underdog gets an upset, I hate upsets when okay, so this is my least favorite type of upset is like like you know, grand finals are set to be Mango versus Zane, and then Wizzy upset Zane. Let's say, right for for argument's sake. Okay. Yep. And then, okay, cool. And then you remove the grand finals. It's like, wow, we just upset Zane or whatever. And then they just get trunched, and it's like, uh, <laughs> the set yeah. actually just would have been a lot more entertaining if the upset didn't happen. This used to happen all the time with ice climber players, right? You get the ice climber, like they'd get their one win where they beat the one top player, and then like the next round, it's like, oh, now we now with Sebi's, we've got, I don't know. D- Diz Kid Boogie versus Armada or something. You know what I mean? It's like, okay, well, <laughs> the dream, you know, the dream, it's like, all right. Like that was hype when that, when they got the upset, but it's like this, this, this one isn't happening. And, and it's just yeah. like, all right, this is kind of boring now. So, and, and it's the worst when like, there's a bunch of upsets happen and then you watch your top eight and it's like, okay, wait, wait, wait. Who are these guys actually? Like, what is this top eight? Like you're watching <laughs> a bunch. Of, and th- 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 this was actually the Smash 4 classic. Cause I tried to watch Smash 4 when that game was out, but that game was so dog shit that episodes happened all the time and they actually happened too much you know and so you get to your top eight and i would i would be like all right i'm let's watch some smash Four top eight now that now that melee is over and i'm just like who are these guys i don't know anyone <laughs> in this top eight oh where, where are the top players what happened to them and it's like oh well the, this this top player lost to this guy this top player lost to this guy and i'm just like okay i you know and so so those are my least favorite types of lawsuits right wizzy won the event he beat he beat the best players there. He beat Mango and he beat Zane. So it's like nobody can take shit from him. No one exactly. like no one can say anything to him. He won the event and he beat everybody that was seated above him. So that's like the that's like the best possible outcome you can ask for. And not even Mango and Zane can be upset, right? Cuz like, you know, like I talked to Zane about it. It's like, well, you know, he like he beat he won. He so it's not like I was playing bad. And, like, Mango shat on him. He just won. He beat everybody. Like, me and Mango both lost. So, what are you going to do? Sometimes Wizzy just plays out of his, god, out of his goddamn mind. That, that's my number five. So, I'll, I'll, I'm going to flip my number five and my number six. And, yo, Cindy, thank you for the, the gifted sub to Firepuff. Appreciate that, buddy. Woohoo! Oh, and, of course, like, what you were saying with how it's not really exciting when there's a huge upset leading up to Grand Finals and then Grand Finals is sort of a wash. But, like, Wizzy thwarted that because I think I was... Like I was thinking this after he beat Mango, I was going, well, he's going to have to play Zane now. But as that set right. just kept going, we're like, oh my gosh, this could actually happen. And I know that S2J had beaten Zane maybe like a month or two prior. And I think it was the Four Loco Fight Night tournament, which was also really fun to watch. But it was really cool just to see that culminate all the way through because it, it doesn't happen super often, I feel like. Like even between top players, like if, if you're supposed to win, I feel like once you get to top eight, that's kind of how it goes. Or maybe I've been conditioned to think that. And I know upsets do happen, but I, it was really cool. I'll let you get to your six, though. My six? Because uh, that was, that okay. was six Okay, well, my me. six is related. My six is mm-hmm. related to my uh, my six is related to my number five, actually. Uh, it actually could not have happened without number five. But my number six was Mango's DK pop-off. <laughs> a little bit personal here you know again s fat jam not showing up on my list we actually did this for uh the uh what we did we did this or that with with scar we called it lr with bobby scar with or lr with tofen scar and you know i do think s fat jam is a little more iconic but me personally me personally even though s fat jam is more iconic we got an emote out of it mango's dk pop-off was really fucking funny because one he looked like donkey kong <laughs> but two more importantly he he was I've never seen Mango do this. I've known Mango for a long time. He's never. I've never seen him do this. He was basically mocking Wizzy because when Wizzy beat Mango, Wizzy was like this to the camera, like, "What the hell's going on?" And Mango, the next week, it was like, "Damn, is is, is Mango going to lose to Wizzy again? What's going on? This is crazy." And Mango clutches it, and right. it was basically like it was, close. it was basically like a it was like it was basically like a middle finger to the haters. It was like or or to the doubters. It was like yeah, like get the fuck out of here, guys. You guys forgot who I am. I'm Mango. I don't lose to fucking Captain Falcon. Get that shit out of here. Like, oh, I beat Mango. Like, yeah, <laughs> shut, you know, shut the fuck up. That's kind of what that was. And I thought that was great because we never get that out of Mango. We usually get 
pretty much just really earnest vibes from Mango, right? Like, if anything, you know, Mango's snarky on his stream, but, like, you know, as a competitor, Mango's very, very, like, buttoned up. When you really think about it, Mango's very respectful as a competitor. Like, yeah. he's usually, you know, his pop-offs are very sincere and genuine. He's never really BM'd to his opponents ever. Right? He hasn't been. I mean, the last time Mango BM'd an opponent was, what, Big House 4 when he went Falcon against Hex? I, I, I don't know. And then the time before that was 2010 when he jabbed Hungry Box in, in the Puff Ditto. It really is pretty few and far between that we actually see yeah. Mango with a little bit of BM in him. So it's it's been a long fucking time. Uh, he's really usually not like that. So I thought it was really funny, and that's that's my number six. It's not a critique on Mango or anything, but I feel like I would have loved that so much more if he just three would Wizzy super hard. But that was a game five set. Like people forget. I think that yeah yeah yeah. Well, I think it, I think tensions were high certainly because it was so close, and he turned it around, and he was like, oh, well, like why were you guys? You guys thought there was gonna be another you know another Wizzy moment? Like nah nah nah, get out of here. Very get fair. Very fair. And so number five for me. You your number five. Yeah, is seeing the Melee community rally behind the P-plus community, like, as a whole. Sure. And I love, I just love how, first of all, there was a little bit of a, and we've talked about this, not together, but, I mean, this has been a common topic of discussion the past month, but Five Days of Melee sort of, like, brought P-plus back into my, like, peripheral and then seeing a bunch of people streaming P plus in the spring when there was like a new build that came out and all throughout the summer, just seeing how for all these IRL events that are coming up in the late summer and fall, we're going to have P plus brackets and I'm going, Oh, this is cool. And then uh, everything happens. And then we didn't just, again, kind of like get into like a, not a divisive thing, but it's just like, I, d I didn't know how quickly Melee would just try to rally behind P+, or if there would just be sort of a, okay, well, we'll see you again in well, five we, years. I mean, we all hate Nintendo, so. <laughs> exactly, you know. Yeah. So I yeah, love seeing that. All. Like, it affirmed to me that, yes, okay, this is obviously the right thing to do. We got to stick mm -hmm. together on this. We, ha we all hate Nintendo, so let's yeah. support P+. Yeah, definitely. That's a good one. That's a good one. And you know my number five. It was Wizzy's run, so we can get it, get to our number fours. Yeah, so for me, I so this will be low for a lot of this people's is where list. I think I will say this is probably the part of the list where there's some there's some less uh we we might start agreeing on a lot of things. Well, depending, I, it depends. No, on we're not going to agree on like... my four. We're not going to agree on my four. Okay. Yeah, because I made mine a lot more personal. So like that's uh, just a reminder. But number four was Mango beating Zane at Summit Eleven, and I know that's probably your number one. But there's a few moments of me that are like more important to me or like more awesome wow. like, around around melee. But that being said, this was absolutely insane, bonkers, as you say. I love it when you say bonkers, by the way. And mm. seeing Appreciate seeing that. Zane get pushed to that limit by Mango was was awesome. That there was so much on the line, all the storyline stuff. But mm -hmm. I was in my bed trying to go to sleep because I had to get up in like five hours. But I still couldn't go to bed because I had to see the mango run. I had to see how it ended, and like when 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 Ma when mango won, I like popped off like a little bit because my wife is sleeping right next to me, so I couldn't do it super mm -hmm. hard. But I was just like, let's go, let's go, like like that. It was yeah. so it was amazing. Listen, I've been to. Uh, should I talk about this now? I'll, I guess I'll save it for 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 when we get to our number ones. I'll save it for for when we get to our number ones. So give you guys something to look forward to. But I have a lot I can say about that moment. Instead, I'll give my number four, which Let's was actually go. just all of all of Octagon 2. Also very personal because I played in it. And I will say, as a player in Octagon 2, I, yes, I, well, so I grinded really hard for Octagon 2. I practiced with Zeodyne a fair bit. I practiced with Nun a fair bit. I practiced with Drug Fox's Falcon. I took Octagon 2 very seriously <clears> because for me, they asked me to play in it. And I was like, dude, I'm so much worse than the other players that are going to be in the event uh ibdw uh er, er, well everyone from golden gardens first of all none was playing versus moki zane was playing versus mango there was the ibw s2j set and i'm like okay i don't want to disappoint because i'm clearly not a top 10 player the way basically everyone else in the event is um also with regard to scar i've played scar in a lot of sets over the years on the scar tove show and i've always said this i think scar is some of the scariest scar that i fought is when he's at his rustiest because he plays like he has nothing to lose. Mm. I can't play like that. I think part of it is that I don't play Captain Falcon. Um, and, and I think part of it is just that Scar has... He's more old school than me. He has a very deep wealth of... You know, Melee's in his bones. 
Okay, Melee's in my bones, but Melee's really in Scar's bones. So even if he hasn't touched a controller for a couple weeks, like he can actually make some real magic happen. Um, I can't do that. If I'm rusty, you'll immediately know it, and I'm terrible. Uh, so I looked at it in the sense of like, I don't care how much preparation Scar is going to do. Like, I want to play the best melee I can play. Um, so I actually grinded really hard for that event, harder than I think I prepared for any tournament. I've been to recently. Wow. Um, and also, obviously, from the behind the scenes fact factor of just like seeing it all come together, all of the I, I loved that they did a credit sequence featuring all of the staff at Golden Guardians, most of whom none of you ever, none of you will ever really know about. Um, but like our art director, Crystal, um, Ji Yun, uh, like, you know, Zeke, who does our socials, you know, of course. I know that Sam um, wasn't actually, super involved. I asked him when I had him on my podcast, like, hey, Sam, what did you do with the, the Octagon 2? He's like, uh, not really a whole lot, honestly. <laughs> it's just let the other people in Golden yeah. Guardians work on that. He didn't I didn't want to take a lot of credit. Bit, but yeah, yeah. I mean, it was, a, it was definitely a team effort. And it was, I would say, a smashing success. Like, I mean, Mango went Mango going to the East Coast and then playing a land set was actually really amazing. Not even for the Octagon Two itself, but also just like the content we got out of that. Those streams were really fun. Oh yeah, where they were just playing friendlies with each other. Um, and uh, yeah, that was a great event. That was like like the content we got out of it was really good. The skins that like uh, uh, Van City Primal, Primal. KK, yep. mm -hmm. yeah, TKK's editing, um, uh, like the player trailers we had the matches themselves the commentary like all of it was really 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 good and it feels good to be a part of something so octagon 2 was my number four i love that and it was yeah. it's great to hear like that like okay something that you said this isn't a quick aside but something that you said on radio melee in one of the more recent episodes i can't remember which one but like you said that if you were to make a top eight at a major that you're also supposed to commentate on you'd be willing to drop yeah. out to commentate is that can you just unpack that for just an extra quick second? Because that is a wild yeah. thing to hear from you. Because, well, if I actually made top eight in a major, like, think about who I'd be playing in top eight. It'd be like, it'd be someone like Zane, right? Okay. Uh, I don't want to play Zane in bracket. I think it'd be embarrassing. <laughs> so... But you made top eight. I would... <laughs> no. I'm not beating anybody in top eight. I'm probably not making top eight. No, if I got to top eight and I was set to commentate the event, they're honestly, they're paying, they're paying me to be there for a reason... And I would leave it up to the discretion of the TOs. That's that's ultimately what I would do. I would tell them I we would have a conversation. We'd figure out what to do. Um, if they have somebody who they think would be good as a backup, we would do that. If they think it would make sense for me to commentate my own match, and and we had the technology, I would do that. Uh, and if they wanted me to drop out, I would do that because yeah, I don't know. I I I think it's important to be realistic, and I just don't think I'm beating Zane now. If I the the real conversation to be had here is here's the thing right the real conversation to be had is at my current level of skill and my current level of preparation tournament preparation i'm not gonna make top eight melee is not that easy of a game true if i was playing enough and prepared enough to actually be making top eight at a major that's a conversation i would have to have then and there because the, my circumstances would just be different mm -hmm. in fact i would go so far to say that i'm probably not going to be able to make top eight in any tournament i'm commentating anyway because the way it works is these days, Melee is just way too hard of a video game. And if you're going to a tournament and you're spending most of your time between your sets commentating because you've got a very tight schedule full of commentary, you know, that probably means you're not going to be playing at a level where you're going to be able to make top eight anyway. That's just kind of how it works. At Riptide, we had brutal commentary schedules. And, oh, um, that, that sounds I, really tough. Yeah, I mean, a, a big part of the reason I got as sick as I did after Riptide was because... Um, well, you the know, fly. we were commentating. Yeah, we were commentating the fly too. Yep. I got very little sleep and we were commentating six to eight hours a day. And in between my commentary sets, sometimes I had to play and it was just, yeah, it's, it's really hard. Um, so I, the real answer is, I just don't think it would happen. I just don't think it would happen. And I think there's a reason you, you don't usually see it happen in a game. Like it's just, melee's just too hard. You know, melee's too hard. It's a very physical game. You have to be very, uh, yeah, there's a reason these top players practice and 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 have the regimens that they do. Um, 
it's 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 just a tough game. That's what it takes. You're right. And by the way, I love how yeah. they make you commentate six to eight hours in a day just to avoid having to have turned on for Walt commentate at Riptide for Melee. Although, <laughs> Walt, you did get to I do Rivals. I would love to get more Walt blocks on there. Yes, I would love to get more Walt blocks on there. I, I, abs- absolutely. <laughs> absolutely. No, I'm just teasing. I tease him about him in his Discord. So that's a uh, – mm-hmm. yeah, I'm just joking. Okay, so number three. I think we're on to number three now. Yep. I got to attend my very first tournament this year, my first IRL event. So, wow. So as a story, for me, I knew about Melee – Way back in like 2006, when I fer- I was like watching melee stuff on YouTube because I just wanted. Mm-hmm. I was like, is there, a- is there any melee stuff on this YouTube thing? Because it was very yeah. new at that time. And I found Ken November 2005. Chris. Yeah, yep. that's when I first. Yeah, yep. so I find Ken versus PC Chris MLG 2006 Grand Finals, and I was transfixed watching oh, PC Chris's is- Falco was incredible and i'm like uh in 2006 i'm about to turn 11 in october of that year and i'm just going like oh, i want to do this but i'm like also the kind of person who's a little bit more introverted a little bit like growing up in a family where video games are like specifically a pastime that you'll spend a couple of hours on at the most and of course you know anyway all that Ooh. to say I didn't get like super into Melee and try to be a person that's like a member of the community, if you will, until the mm-hmm. end of 2018. Like Armada had already right. retired. So I missed a lot of, there's a lot of gaps of stuff I don't know. Like I, I didn't watch Genesis after it happened. I only heard about it like years afterwards, like the Smash documentary, because I watched that wow. one and, it came out, and that kind of stuff. So there's yeah. just like in and out up to this time where now I'm going, I want to like, put more time into melee i keep trying to quit melee but every time i see it i love it more so mm-hmm. that's how i've just continued to get more into it I and mean, i went zero two very proudly lost to mushi or maushi i don't know i can't remember now and burgers and fries i went zero two but it was awesome like it was super cool what to t- go to what tournament event. jesse's house tournament number two so nice. not me jesse but uh jay bobison who runs stuff here in lancaster pennsylvania yeah had, was able to host a tournament uh like a house fest and that was mm-hmm. really fun it was awesome like it was the melee experience that i've just what is so excited to finally get to experience for myself it was so cool yeah that would be a very good that that if there's something that's going to go above mango and zane it's going to be definitely your first offline tournament that's a big that's a big one that's a big milestone I, you know, it's funny. I did. I actually did not go into my first tournament, which I was very happy about. Oh, I, I did like that. beat. Well, I beat. Well, I mean, it, I kind of cheated because the person I beat in losers uh, was someone in my carpool uh, who was my rival at the time, <laughs> who was Ko Star, who was playing Mewtwo. How about that? Um, and he was a Mewtwo player, and I was a Falco player back then. And I, I did beat. Uh, I guess I guess my rival, so to speak, if that makes sense. But um. Yeah, it, it, that that's definitely a really special. I got into melee in college, uh, so this was you know many years ago, but that's a good one. My number three, um, for, for these for me are going to be a little bit more obvious. I think um, these are going to be probably the ones that, that everybody expects. So for me, number three is going to be IBW R- winning Riptide. And oh, let's um, go. Part of it is IBDW Cody himself. Part of it is also just Riptide and the fact that the tournament was very very special. I actually almost want to say. My number three isn't even really Cody winning Riptide, but just Riptide in general. Mm-hmm. Tying into my number 10, offline events coming back is really, really big for me. Um, it was a feeling I, I I greatly missed. And I actually, because I think because there was, there was such a big gap between the last time we really went to offline majors and now, there were so many people I met at Riptide that I'd only known from the online era. There were um, just so many uh, really neat things that happened that weekend. Um, it was super duper fun. I'm so glad I went to basically the first offline major, you know, in a year and a half. And the way Cody won, really just all of the top three, I thought Plup HBox was amazing. Plup IBW, both sets were really fun to watch. The way Cody played with me as a Fox player, I thought was phenomenal. He did so many really, really awesome things. Um, so you could really say my num- my number three really is just Riptide in general, but but just to give a little bit of a shout out to to Cody, uh, I'm gonna I'm gonna say it's Cody winning Riptide. Um, yeah, shout out as as the cherry on top for 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 the weekend. It was amazing because it's not a very long list of people who've won melee majors, right? Like it's like a still less than twenty people, right? 
something like that. Yeah. I, I don't know. I was listening not to very the, many listening I've to the stats one. podcast with Logan. That was cool. But like, it's not a long list mm-hmm. of people who won melee majors because a lot of people like Mango and Hungry Box and Armada were at the top for so long for so many years. And mm-hmm. yeah, it's it's starting to look like it's opening up a little bit with players like IBDW and hopefully Logan or Kadoran or Ben or uh, Aklo, like all kinds of people that are that are starting to get to like a higher level. Hopefully that just mm-hmm. continues, not to the detriment of the old guard, if you will, but just because I think that s- if you have a player who's more like IBDW, who's more like who's more like a, a younger, newer player. Not that, okay, they've all been playing a long time. <laughs> Ben's been playing for like six plus years, but just like, it's a different face. It makes you think to yourself, oh, I can do this too. Like, it, I think that's a big deal. Yeah, that's super fair. Um, and, you know, I think it's, uh, it goes both ways in the sense that I also think it's really cool that Melee is a deep enough game that the oh, same yeah. people win. Uh I love when Mango wins because he's been doing it for so long and he's old. And like, that's supposed to be a detriment to you if you're in esports, but you know, he makes it, he makes the magic happen. But anyways, Mango's going to win a a major at 40 years old if he's still playing, but I'm sure he'll still be playing. But if he's playing in tournaments at 40, he's going to win one because that's the Mm -hmm. Mango. Like, I feel very confident saying that. What's your, oh yeah. What's your number three? I was about to move to my number two. Uh, yeah, no, Riptide. Riptide. Okay, so we did cover that. Yeah, My bad. and Cody winning Riptide. Okay, so number two for me was being in the Cheats chat for when Yangling got voted into Summit because I got so invested in that. I was the wow. fish head, and I wow. was so, so hopeful that somebody like Yangling, who's on the surface a meme pick, but I thought mm-hmm. it was just like I I saw very clearly the 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 uh, the just kind of like the rhetoric of y- you you could be Yingling you could be that person going to yeah. Summit Eleven and playing with those people at the first melee event that's really big in person since the pandemic started and you could mm-hmm. get that power up you could get that practice and it doesn't have to be um, I, I don't want to say this in a negative way it's just that I understand that because Summit is an invitational of course the top players are going to go and more top players right. will get voted in. But I also yeah. believe that if it's a vote in process, if somebody can run a campaign as well as the cheat did and Yangling could just have that persona like he did and mm-hmm. do all that crazy stuff, I was just like, by the end, I had dropped a fair amount of points on the vote. You know, not I was not the whale that made it happen. Let's just make that clear. But right. it was amazing. And I popped up harder because, first of all, I wasn't in bed at, like, 12 o'clock midnight. I was, like, working <laughs> at the time or something, but I was just like, yes, yes. Like, I was so I was so excited. Like, I'm starting to get shake a little bit now. I just remember that feeling very, very clearly. Mm-hmm. Yeah, absolutely. I, uh... I, I think that's a... That's, that's, that's definitely a good one. That's definitely a good one. My number two is, uh... Well... I think the, the the last two should be probably pretty easy to predict at this point. But my number two is actually just the Golden Gardens pickup. So obviously this is very personal because this was this was me. I mean, it could have been my number one, but um, uh, I think just not even for myself here, just uh, what Gigi's doing in melee. I'm a big believer of the mission. There was actually another prominent esports team I was looking at, um, and uh, I was yeah in conversations with another team. But I was just a lot more impressed with what Golden Guardians was doing, what they said about their mission statement for content, what they said about their mission statement for NorCal Melee. Uh, the Golden State Warriors, obviously being a physical sports team, really value in-person fan bases, right? Yeah. Uh, and 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 Smash in general has that, right? And I think that's a big reason they want to get into Smash and. Uh, it's been going well, like uh, Super what, well. what what we're doing, you know, if you look at the, the, the numbers, you know, we're, we're outperforming a lot of the other LCS teams in terms of content uh, with our with our melee content. Um, GG Melee, be, you know, I love it. Game. So, yeah, it's it's crazy. And um, it's going better than it's or not better. It's going about as about as well as. Uh, yeah, I mean, we, we set out to do something and we're doing it. Um, and that's pretty cool. It's working. 
I know and, that you uh, would probably disagree with this, Toaf, but I feel like mm-hmm. you in 2021, you're the voice of Melee. That's that's my perception. Uh, and I, I, I say that because you commentate a lot of these events. And of course, uh-huh. you've done this for years. So I've, like people think about Scar and there's other uh, people who are very famous. Uh, Prague is like uh, always going to be a favorite of mine. When I go back and watch a set that Prague yeah. commentated, it's always fun to listen to Prague as well. But oh, he's great. I I think that this is like so well deserved on a level that like as soon as I saw like I I was just as excited to see you being announced as a new member of the Golden Guardians as mm. of course seeing Nun and seeing yeah. PPMD. But I I think that what you're doing with trying to make melee a full-time thing for you or at least the breadwinner for how you make income and try to go through life that you're making it that much of a priority for you to see that be rewarded is so cool i think it's so cool that you got into golden guardians and from my perception as a viewer a consumer of the gg melee content is going super well it's so it's so awesome to watch uh, everybody on the team but it's especially really cool to see you being involved in all of that and I will say that what's been the coolest to me has been just um, uh, the uh, the fact that I've gotten to be, become so much closer to, you know, it's just like everything else, like the real blank is the friends we made along the way. <laughs> but the coolest thing for me is was how much closer I got to get to uh, Zane and Nun and PP, just in terms of uh, all our, our, my personal relationships with those guys have become so much closer since we started doing all this content and all this stuff. And after, um, after the event that I have at my number one spot, um, it was really cool. Uh, you know, I'm just gonna, I'm just gonna save it for, uh, I'm gonna save it for, for, for when we talk about our number ones, as a matter of fact, but, um, but there's a tie in. So, so you can go ahead and give your number one first. First of all, I do have honorable mentions. It's on my, it's on my list, but, I oh, wanted awesome. to do honorable mention of Firepuff 12 because mm-hmm. Firepuff 12 has been very, very nice to me. Has come on the podcast a couple of times. We had a lot of fun with those and in general, mm-hmm. very supportive. So shout outs to Firepuff 12 in the Discord, the Fire Nation. And also shout outs to Jay Mook just randomly coming out of nowhere in my life and beating Ginger. And I think in one of the early net play events of this year, it was like January. But for yeah, Jay Mook is awesome. Jay Mook watching Jay Mook Sheik was cool. And I like watching Sheik for the record. I just feel like I didn't see a lot of Sheik representation uh, uh, unless it was Spark in SCL1 of last year. But seeing that there was going to be more Sheik in the near future and Ben as well. And of course, Pluppet, Riptide and so on. But my yeah. number one, number one thing is, is super personal to me. It is the it is the culmination of episode 100, getting to do it with you, uh, saying I'm going to lean in to doing like, you know, I, I wasn't specifically inspired by you. I'm sorry. You were not the main inspiration behind making a podcast and trying to get more into Melee stuff. That was uh, that was the Wannabes podcast, JD and uh-huh. Wasabi, as well as the Austin Melee, all the all of them as well they're very inspirational to me but just seeing other Love people Austin, yeah just seeing people like them like yourself like anybody in melee really just trying to express uh how much they love the game and and grow themselves and put themselves out there i've just never been great at putting myself out there and i said i i gotta do it i gotta try and it, so far so good i love what i'm doing i know it's i'm not for everyone but i've really enjoyed it so far and having these conversations has been really really fun along the way yeah that's a great um that's a good one that's a good one i mean i think that's a that's that's definitely a monumentous uh sort of thing and should be should be celebrated my number one of course is mango zane finals um i don't think there's any way to slice it uh the energy in the room was palpable as somebody who was there uh you gotta you gotta give it to hey thanks omid for the raid buddy appreciate that um, you gotta give, I, I, I gotta give it to, to, to Mango Zane. I've been to a lot of Smash Summits. I've been to 10 of them. The only one I skipped was Smash Summit 3. I have never, ever seen a chant at Smash Summit. No one is, I mean, because, you know, it's, it's, it, it doesn't really make sense. It's an invitational. Like, yeah. there's, there's limited space. There's limited people there. You know, it's a little more low key. People are usually kind of, I've never seen, I've never seen or heard a chant. It's never happened. It doesn't make sense. Um, the fact that Mango's still winning things, uh, I was, you know, I was the biggest, you know, I lost my breath for Mango back in 2009 at Genesis 1, and if I wasn't commentating Smash Summit 11, I probably would have done it all over again, and um, it was, it was, uh, it was, it was really 
wild and unexpected. And, you know, I'm not even saying this from for, for just Mango. I just think the fact that um obviously I'm I would say these days I'm probably better friends with Zane. I mean, I talk to Zane a lot. I talk to Zane all the time. Um, oh, oh, and, yeah, yeah. uh, you know, even after, after finals, you know, none came up to me. This is what I was going to say for number two was like, you know, after finals with regards to kind of my, my, the bonds that I built with those guys, uh, no pun intended, you know, none came up to me and he's like, Hey, let's go, uh, let's go check on Zane. Cause, uh, you know, might be, might be bumming. And so we, you know, we went, we went and found him. We had a little GG huddle over in the corner while everybody else was celebrating for mango. Uh, and I was like, yeah, this, I mean, this never would have happened before the golden guardian. Like we, 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 we became so much better friends with each other and it wasn't just because we're on the same esports team. I think we're just, we're just really bros at this point. And, um, um, that's really cool to me. Cause I mean, I've, I've known none and Zane for several years at this point, but I don't think, you know, before we got picked up by GG, there's, there's no way we, we, we would have, uh, kind of huddled like that, which was kind of cool. But, but yeah, I mean, people were, you know, I think there's a certain magic to melee, and uh, Mango Zane Grand Finals definitely had everything you could possibly ask for, um, and uh, that's that's like the kind of thing that, that that keeps the game going. At the end of the day, at the end of the day, you know, it's it's like for me because I've been to as many events as I have, you know, in and out of NorCal. It's like, you know. I, I think it's it, it really is the the top level of the game needs to be exciting for new people like that's ultimately what's going to bring people in and what's going to keep people in and so um as much as i celebrate you know the little guy and as much as i celebrate um you know up and coming players like you know flash versus ginger flash versus wizard and these these crazy sets you know it, it really is like you know the the spotlight on people like Mango, uh, it's it's so it's such an inspiration to to all of these new players who are trying to become the best and uh, uh, yeah it's so easy to write off a player like Mango because you know he's older now and he's been doing it for so long but the fact that he can still win and the fact that he does it the way he does it um, obviously with an incredibly unique play style I think is just so inspirational for so many people and uh, you you really could see it if you were there in the room I mean people were so just buck wild when mango uh clutched it over zane and it, i mean it was such a great grand finals the way it happened the fact that it was game 10 last stock you know down to the, down to literally a frame right if zane was a frame faster on that up air yeah i would have won the set i mean that you couldn't ask for a better finish it was like something out of a picture book something out of a movie you know and hopefully there will be some kind of documentary or movie made about Smash Summit 11, yeah. hopefully. It would be awesome to see that. You know, It'll be one that will certainly be talked about years to come. Probably still going to be the set of 2021, but that's the exciting thing. We're not actually yeah. all the way through this year yet. There's a couple of more big tournaments coming up and more Melee to be played. So I love, I love thinking about that. But I love hearing stories like that, Tof. And I don't know if that was something that you specifically got into either radio melee or your own YouTube content about just the GG huddle at the end, because that is such a hard conversation to have. I'm sure it, it can't be easy where you walk up to somebody who lost a big event and mm -hmm. what are you supposed to say? Right. But if you have that relationship, that's easier because it's not like, Oh, mutual. I'm sorry that happened to you. And they're like, well, I don't really want to, I really want to talk to you right now. We don't know each other like mm -hmm. that, but you know, Zane like that. And that's really cool. Really cool to hear that right. story. Yeah, it's 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 a tricky conversation to have there for sure. Just because you know they're gonna be feeling a certain way, but uh, but yeah, Zane's. I mean, Zane's a competitor. I think he's gonna be back with a vengeance. So, yeah, I personally really don't think he's gonna man. lose to Mangos Fox in a hurry. At the very least, I just I that, I love thinking about that kind of stuff because, like you said, it's very inspirational. Like seeing like all of Twitter for a second seemed to be tweeting about Mango versus Zane in that grand finals, or at least in the esports realm of things, like all kinds mm -hmm. of different people, players from different games. And that was really cool just to see. Yeah. There's like a, there's that feeling that it seems like Mango is very capable of bringing on those amazing losers runs that he's been able to make for a decade plus now, just to kind of make everybody want to play melee again. Yep. Absolutely. Absolutely. And so to get in Absolutely. the direction to get in the direction of wrapping up, because we've been going more than an hour here, didn't want to take up too much more of your time. I wanted to mm -hmm. basically just end it with on the podcast side of things for to stop recording. Tell the people where they can find you, even though 
that should be obvious by now if you've been paying <laughs> attention. Yeah, Tope BBQ on YouTube and Twitch. Uh, unlike my Twitter username, there's no underscore between the Tope and the BBQ. So if you're confused, yeah, that's my fault. My SEO <laughs> sucks. I get it. But if you go to Twitter at tof underscore bbq you'll find links to the twitch and also to youtube and it's all good amazing content to follow along you just believe that from me as well as the man himself so tof one more time thank you so much for joining me on the bottom of smash mountain you ready to bizounce absolutely dude thank you for uh thank you for having me appreciate that buddy talk to you again sometime cypher <laughs>